With this Flamenco Riffs for Beginners video, we'll take another step closer to being able to solo and improvise by showing how to phrase minor scale riffs while soloing with rhythm. While with guitar tabs and practice rhythm backing tracks, we'll cover it all with the step-by-step -step approach. Now, learning how to solo or improvise, it's very similar to learning how to speak another language. For example, uh, when you first learn your initial flamenco riffs on guitar, uh, that's the same thing as learning to speak or copy your first sentences. And right about the same time you're learning to put sentences together, you also start to focus on punctuation. And in music, uh, punctuation is referred to as phrasing. And if you can phrase your riffs on guitar, you have better control over the mood of the riff or solo you're playing. Uh, it's also the ability to land on the right note at just the right time. And the first step with understanding how to phrase on guitar is to learn about root notes. Now, in using the minor scale to solo with flamenco, your root notes can be considered the capital letters and periods to end your phrasing or sentences with. And it's a pretty straightforward concept with root notes. Uh, for example, if you're playing in the key of A minor, every A note would be considered the root note of that key or scale you're playing in. And so let's apply this concept of phrasing with root notes with some riffs we've covered from previous lessons. For most guitarists, the first time they learn to play the minor scale, they learn it in a box pattern form. And usually that'll be in the key of A along the fifth fret position. Now it's one thing to learn a box pattern, but you need to know what notes to focus on or to phrase around in order to get better control over your mood or tone. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to take that first step by focusing on where the A root notes are that you'll phrase around. And within that box pattern, the standard one, there are three of them. We have the low A root note on the bottom string 5th fret, what I would call the middle root note on the 4th string 7th fret, and then since both the top and bottom strings open our E on the 5th fret, they're both going to be A, so that high root note is on the 1st string 5th fret. And even though this is a real basic deal, it's good to your training, especially if you haven't done this before, to get acclimated to those octaves or those root note positions. So. Uh, now, with the box pattern in our previous lesson, we did apply a root note focus. We just didn't get into detail with that beginner's lesson. But let's, let's go into detail now and show you how to apply a root note focus to the box pattern. And it'll sound like this. So we're just ascending, but we land on the A root note. And when you focus on the A root note, again, you get better control over your tone or mood, the intended mood of the scale. And the minor scale, it's pretty versatile, but I would describe it as sad, serious, or flamenco-like. And you only get that tone if you land on the root note. So a lot of people might, might just end there, but what we did, we worked our way back down to that A root note. Dun, 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 dun. You can hear that sort of like flamenco sort of sound there, but let's do that box pattern one more time. And there's your A root note. And that is step one, applying a root note focus to the basic A minor box pattern. Now let's apply a root note focus to some riffs we covered in previous lessons. And the first riff was a riff I referred to as the minor scale riff. Again, this one will be an A. And with this riff, there is an obvious root note focus. Again, we're in A. Uh, the riff starts with an A note. And as we descend down the scale, it ends on a root note, the middle A root note. Uh, a couple of other riffs we did, uh, the low strings riff, again, all these examples will be in A. Uh, the low strings riff pretty much just ascends up the box pattern, but we stop on the root note, and we begin on the root note as well. And then another standard riff, uh, a riff I called the hammer-on riff, again in A. Now it doesn't start on the A root note, but it ends on one. In 
all of those riffs we covered in previous lessons, they have a root note focus. Now, another tip when it comes to combining the riffs is to apply some phrasing technique. So there's more to it than just landing on the A root note. Uh, you want to let the A root notes at the end of each riff ring or sustain a little bit. Uh, so let's put together those three riffs and show you how that'll sound uh, with the ring or sustain added. In fact, we'll start with the box pattern. Then you give it about a second there. That's a great way to start with phrasing. And then the V minor scale riff. Shifting to the low strings riff. And then ending with the hammer on riff. And that is basic phrasing technique, letting the root note sustain a little bit in between the riffs. Uh, when you do that, uh, you simply sound more competent, more confident with your playing. But also, establishing that root note focus also helps establish the intended mood or tone of the scale. In this case, with the minor scale, that's a sad, serious, or flamenco-like tone. Now, ultimately, the goal is to play these riffs along with backing rhythm tracks. Uh, but if you haven't done that before, uh, playing along or practicing these riffs along with the backing rhythm track uh, it can be a little confusing uh, if you haven't done it before. So a good idea to get acclimated with playing with rhythm is to set a prearranged running order of riffs. In other words, uh, lay out a game plan uh, so you don't have to think about what riff you're going to go to uh, in the middle of the jam. So uh, again, we're going to stay in A. And the running order riffs we're going to apply with this next clip, we're going to start with V minor riff. follow that with the low strings riff, followed by the hammer-on riff, then the box pattern. You might notice we're kind of shifting to going from high string riffs to low string riffs. Uh, but for the ending, we'll have enough time for one more riff, so we're going to end by going back to the minor scale riff. that point the rhythm track will be ending and in fact that last note we played sliding up to that A root note uh, that's going to land right about the same time the final A minor chord is strummed and again that's another phrasing technique uh, you want to know it's producing a harmonized ending uh, when you end a jam you don't want a meandering riff to play uh, you want to harmonize with that last chord and it just simply sounds a little bit more cohesive everything sounds put to more put together when you play a harmonized ending. So uh, note that um, in the next clip, uh, the reason why I said note that is because we're going to have a guide solo that you can actually play along with. That way you won't go too fast or too slow. Uh, so if you can keep up with the guide solo in the next track, uh, you'll get that harmonized ending and also uh, get the phrasing technique down. And again, following the running order of V minor scale riff, low strings riff, the hammer-on riff, box pattern, and then going back to the minor scale riff to end the jam. The same concept of movable riffs and movable box patterns can be applied to the root notes. So what we've been doing in A, those root note positions are movable. So for example, if we were to shift up two frets, A, A sharp, B, uh, and again using the minor scale, so in the key of B minor, those fundamental root note positions remain the same for the box pattern. Uh, so with that, 
In the next clip, we're going to do a jam in B minor. Uh, shifting again everything up two frets, we'll do the same running order, but again, uh, we want to get you acclimated to hearing how phrasing can be applied in different keys. Uh, so with that, the next clip will be in the key of B minor. Next we'll focus on mixing and matching the riffs by playing them in a different running order and we're going to again shift to a different key. This time it's going to be D flat minor, uh, in other words playing the D flat minor scale. Uh, we're going to use that basic box pattern along the ninth fret position. And the new running order we're going to start with the uh, box pattern. <laughs> followed by the hammer-on riff, shifting down to the low strings riff, moving back up to the minor scale riff, and then finishing up with what we started with, the box pattern. So with that, we'll go to the next clip again, uh, the key of D flat minor along the ninth fret position. Now by this point you probably have a pretty good foundation on mixing and matching these riffs. So what we'll do in the next clip is uh, we will just have a backing rhythm track with no guide solo. Uh, so that'll give you a little bit more freedom now to decide your own running order of riffs. And even though we only have four total riffs, that leads to a lot of potential combinations. And here's what I mean. Um, the next clip we're going to be in A flat. So Let's rehearse along the 4th fret, which is A-flat minor. Um, if we actually numbered the riffs, say the minor scale riff, option number 1, option number 2, option number 3, option number 4. So with four total options, uh, the total number of combinations, I believe that's four factorial, a math equation, four times three times two times one. You actually have 24 potential running orders or combinations uh, that you can put together on your own. And uh, so that's what you can do in the next clip. Uh, work out your own uh, variations with the running order. And also um, we're going to extend uh, the progression a little bit more to two verses so that gives you plenty of time to sort of experiment mix and match the riffs and also one other note um, try to get a harmonized ending so um, when the tune wraps up or I should say the the progression wraps up uh, you do want to focus on a root note ending so if you happen to be in the middle of the riff um, abandon the riff and just jump on the root note when that last chord is played. Uh, you don't want to be meandering too much. If the progression ends, you don't want to be starting a solo from the beginning or a riff from the beginning. Uh, so uh, another note, try to get a harmonized ending. Usually that top string sounds the best uh, to harmonize with what's going to be that final strum chord.
Once you have this lesson down, the next step is to move up to the next level of minor scale soloing basics. With that next lesson, we'll learn some additional new riffs that you can combine with the ones you already know. We'll also introduce a new soloing technique called tremolo picking.